and additional sofa seating. Red digital clocks gave the current times in Singapore, Dubai, London, New York, and San Francisco. Given the company's global footprint, there was almost always some kind of emergency situation somewhere in the world that needed attention. And this was often the room where it was dealt with. That December, the emergency was in San Francisco, the company's hometown. Scheduled to start at 7 p.m. and run into the night, the urgent meeting was booked on everyone's calendars as NACS, which stood for the North American Championship Series, an oblique reference to its agenda focusing on operations, product roadmap, and competitive strategy in the top markets in the United States and Canada. This meeting was a key mechanism for the CEO of Uber, Travis Kalanick, called TK within the company, to review the entire business city by city. A small group of about a dozen executives and leaders attended the meeting, including myself and the heads of finance, product, and critically, the RGMs, short for Regional General Managers. The RGMs ran the largest teams at Uber, constituting the on-the-ground operations city teams that engaged with drivers and riders. The RGMs were thought of as the CEOs of their markets, holding responsibility for revenues and losses, the efforts of thousands of ops folks, and were always closest to the trickiest problems in the business. I was there to represent the driver growth team, a critical team responsible for recruiting the scarcest asset in the entire business, Uber drivers. It was a big effort for Uber. We spent hundreds of millions just on driver referrals programs and nearly a billion in paid marketing. Adding more drivers to the Uber network was one of the most important levers we had to grow the business. The weekly NACS meeting opened with a familiar slide, a grid of cities and their key metrics tracking the top two dozen markets. Each row represented a different city with columns for revenue, total trips, and their week-over-week -week change. It also included operational ratios, like the percentage of trips that hit surge pricing, where riders had to pay extra because there weren't enough drivers. Too much surge, and riders would switch to competitors. Uber's largest markets, New York, LA, and San Francisco, were always near the top of the list, representing billions of annual gross revenues each, with smaller cities like San Diego and Phoenix near the bottom. TK sat closest to the screen, dressed casually in a gray t-shirt, jeans, and red sneakers. At the sight of the numbers, he sprung up from his chair and walked up close to the screen. He squinted, staring intensely at the numbers. Okay, okay, he said, pausing. Why did search increase in San Francisco so much? And why is it up even more in LA? He began to pace up and down the side of the war room, the intensity of the questions increasing. Have we seen referral signups dip in the last week? How's the conversion rate in the funnel going? Were there big events this week? Concerts? Folks in the room began to chime in, answering questions and raising their own. A network of networks. It was my first year at the company, and although many companies have weekly reviews, Ubers were different. First, in the discussion about each city, the level of detail surprised me. For San Francisco, the group began to discuss the surge percentages in the city's seven-mile by seven-mile center versus East Bay versus the peninsula. This was a senior group of executives, but the granularity and level of detail was incredible. But this was a requirement to run a complex, hyper-local network like Uber, where supply and demand depended on the dynamics of popular neighborhoods and frequent lanes, like Marina and the Financial District, that tended to be poorly served by other transportation options. In the weekly dashboard, each row represented a city, yes. But more important, each city was an individual network in Uber's global network of networks that needed to be nurtured, protected, and grown. It was deeply and uniquely ingrained in Uber's DNA to talk about metrics at the hyper-local network level. In my several years there, it was unusual to ever hear about an aggregate number, like total trips or total active riders, except as a big vanity milestone at a company all hands. Those aggregate metrics were regarded as mostly meaningless. Instead, the discussion was always centered on the dynamics of each individual network, which could be nudged up or down independently of each other, with increased marketing budget, incentive spend for either drivers or riders.